Before the internet, it was widely accepted that governance was something only done by governments. But the rapid development of information and communication technologies has challenged this notion. Today, no one actor is capable of effectively addressing all the challenges that come with cyberspace. A range of different stakeholders need to be involved. But what does this actually mean in practice? In this video, we'll cover the different stakeholders in cyberspace, why multi-stakeholder approaches to governance are important, and how to engage in them. But first, what is a stakeholder? The word comes from the world of business. In that context, a stakeholder is an actor who could affect or be affected by the actions of a business. Similarly, in the context of cyberspace, a stakeholder can be understood as any actor who has a stake in a particular cyber policy decision. The Tunis Agenda, an important international agreement, identified the relevant stakeholders in internet governance discussions as governments, the private sector, civil society, intergovernmental organisations, international organisations, the technical community and academia. By recognising that there is a role for non-governmental actors, this approach, known as the multi-stakeholder approach, broadens traditional understandings of governance. Put simply, a multi-stakeholder approach is one in which all stakeholder groups have a say in decision-making. The rationale for this approach is that policy issues, particularly those related to cyberspace, have many different dimensions. Take online crime, for example. Here, security agencies are an obvious stakeholder. But this issue also affects businesses and users. And what about the potential human rights implications of the policies or laws which emerge? Shouldn't civil society also be at the table? With the expertise and experience provided by multiple stakeholders, policies can develop in a more balanced, holistic way. But, depending on the issue in question, the roles and responsibilities of different stakeholders may vary. Managing critical internet resources might require different expertise to crafting regulations on online hate speech, for example. The type of decision-making process is also a factor. In other words, a particular stakeholder's role in developing international treaty law is likely to be different from their role in developing voluntary and non-binding standards. And of course, it depends on the forum. It's true that some are now opening up to multi-stakeholder input, but in many of the spaces where cyber policy is made, governments remain the ultimate decision makers. It's important to remember that the internet was chiefly developed by non-governmental stakeholders, notably the technical community and private sector. These early internet pioneers built a set of core values, including universality, openness and decentralization, into the internet's architecture. And with little involvement from policymakers, the internet grew and developed rapidly. But things are changing. Today, cyberspace encompasses all aspects of human life. This space is now very much subject to regulation and policy, and these laws and policies have huge potential implications for everyone. But depending on which stakeholder group you come from, you might have different ideas on what these laws and policies should prioritise. A civil society stakeholder and a business stakeholder might have different opinions on privacy, for example. And it's not always a level playing field. Some stakeholders have more influence than others. In this series, we've talked a lot about securitization. Partly because of this trend, key policy decisions on some cyber issues are increasingly being made behind closed doors by a narrow range of security-related stakeholders. This is a clear risk. When cyber policies are developed without the expertise and scrutiny of a broad range of stakeholders, they can have adverse effects on human rights. They may even undermine the very nature of the internet as an open and interoperable network of networks. Only through genuinely open, transparent processes, which take into account the views of relevant stakeholders, can we, as human rights defenders, ensure this doesn't happen. Depending on where you find yourself in the cyber landscape and which stakeholder group you belong to, your role and opportunities for engagement may vary. Technical and standard-setting organisations are one part of this landscape. Notable forums here are ICANN, which manages domain names and IP numbers, and the Internet Engineering Task Force, which develops network protocols. 
In both, policies are developed through a bottom-up consensus-based process involving a range of different stakeholders. And in the case of ICANN, governments themselves have no decision-making powers, only an advisory role. In these forums, there are a lot of opportunities for human rights defenders to engage. In intergovernmental bodies, by contrast, non-governmental actors may have a consultative role, but in the end, states are the ones who make the decisions. There are, however, dedicated multi-stakeholder spaces within the UN, like the Internet Governance Forum, an annual meeting where stakeholders discuss issues related to Internet governance on an equal footing. Several international conferences and commissions have also opened up to wider stakeholder participation and now actively encourage civil society engagement. And at the national level, there are many different types of bodies that develop cyber policies. Some countries have created national multi-stakeholder frameworks, such as the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. A good example of multi-stakeholder collaboration in practice was the Global Multi-Stakeholder Meeting on the Future of Internet Governance, or Net Mundial, which took place in 2014. Hosted by Brazil, one of the goals of Net Mundial was to identify a set of universally acceptable internet governance principles to guide policy development. Before this, sets of principles had been put forward by several organisations. However, most of them were only recognised by a particular country or region and were not developed with the involvement of all stakeholders. Net Mundial tried to be different by producing a common document on principles with both global scope and multi-stakeholder support. In order to achieve this, the first phase of consultation was held online, with stakeholders able to suggest the scope of the future document. Contributions were then analysed by a multi-stakeholder executive committee and a first draft of the Net Mondial outcome document was published online for public comment. The final version of the text was drafted in São Paulo and approved by rough consensus. It establishes human rights as a cornerstone of internet governance and reinforces the importance of a multi-stakeholder approach. Since then, its principles have been acknowledged in numerous international documents adopted by governmental and non-governmental actors. As a human rights defender, there's plenty you can do to promote more open, transparent and inclusive governance processes. Engage in advocacy campaigns that put pressure on organisations to become more transparent and open. Take advantage of multi-stakeholder forums to develop networks of actors with different expertise. Collaboration and information sharing is the best way to deal with cyber policy issues, which are, by their nature, multidimensional. And at the national level, push for more open discussions on cyber issues to allow different perspectives to be heard.